What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we are back with a top 16 from the Adepticon Chicago, Illinois, Schaumburg. Call it what you will. Vault Tour that went on last weekend. On the left, we have got Colleen playing Luz Vex, the aggressive volcano predator that we did see in the previous round. And on the right, we've got Tyler playing one racer, Medina Ibanez Rat. And probably the most... That's the most noteworthy thing in his deck. He is playing a Time Traveler deck with Library Access. Though he does also have two copies of Ember Imp. And if we go to his Shadows, he doesn't have Bait and Switch and he doesn't have too much to protect. Which is going to be an issue. He also doesn't have Effervescent Principle in Logos. He doesn't have those Emergency You Shall Not Forge kind of cards. Whereas Colleen does have a bait and switch in there. So this is going to be very, very interesting. Colleen's playing full moon and all of that, so you never know, this might go badly for Tyler. On paper, I like Colleen a little bit better here. So Tyler does start off, and initially he gets himself down a succubus, but all it takes is just a quick oubliette, and that one's gone down. Then Silvertooth comes down, one for Colleen, two for Tyler, and remember that they do come in to play ready. Although there is a Nexus there as well that does let you use an opponent's artifact when you reap. So presumably both of those Silver Twos just reaping there. And I believe Colleen probably reaped with hers as well. And that's why we have two Ember for Tyler and one Ember for Colleen. Lovely. Yeah, lo lots, of, um, lots of that going on at the moment. Now... We do see another Shadows turn from Colleen here. She actually gets down her Silent Dagger. When you reap, you deal four damage to a flank creature. And we also see a little bit of Cell Wind the Fence there. When you fight or reap, you move an Ember from one of your cards to your pool. So we got the Ember bonus there from the Silent Dagger, plus a reaping from... Silvertooth, and we're good to go. Oh, it's a library access turn. A very early library access for Tyler here. Remember, every time he plays a card, now he draws a card. So there's help from Future South. Get an Ember, draw a card. But now he gets to go and search his deck for a Time Traveler. Because, of course, these are paired cards. And Time Traveler will give him another Ember bonus. And will let him draw two cards. But because he's played library access, he's actually going to draw three cards now. When he goes ahead and plays this Time Traveler to the bench, as well as getting himself another Ember. So maybe Tyler doesn't have these emergency You Shall Not Forge cards, but oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, he is on it. He is drawing a lot of cards this turn. And remember, every Logos card he draws is a Logos card he can play, which means that he's then going to draw another card. So there goes his three cards. He's at least drawn a Doc Bookton there. Although, straight away, he's actually popping down. Is that Spectral Tunneler? Yes, yeah, Spectral Tunneler. Choose a creature. It's a flank creature in game to reap, draw a card. So, presumably, he's putting that onto one of his Silver Teeth. Ah, oh, but he can't reap with them because it's a Logos turn. No, scrap that. He just gets the Ember bonus and doesn't do much else, to be honest. Boo, hiss, etc. But we see there he's up to six Ember and he's just drawing extra cards. He's still got at least two more Logos cards in hand that I can see. He's got a Time Traveler down. He's got a Doc Bookton down. He's got a Dexter down, which captured an Ember when it came into play. Now, he does not have any Phase... No, he does. He has one copy of Phase Shift. So, looks like he's just did a sloppy lab work discarding his Carlo Phantom there. Interesting side note, 11 of his 12 Shadows cards are creatures here. Huge creature suite for, for Tyler. And now he's just still going. So he's actually using a reverse time there. Swap your deck and discard pile, then shuffle your deck. This is probably a really good play because I haven't been counting. But he's played a lot of Logos cards and it's quite early on in the game. So he's probably got a lot of Logos cards left. Although saying that, I thought he was going to keep going and try and just have an over-the-top turn. But it looks like he just got the Ember and has passed the turn. Now, he's sitting there on 7 Ember. Colleen's now sitting there on 2. This would be a really, really good time for Colleen to drop that bait and switch that she plays. She'd then end up on four, 5. His, her opponent would end up on 4. I mean, 
as it stands, she's got four untamed cards in hand and two Brobna. So, <laughs> fair to assume, not only are we not getting a bait and switch, this isn't going to be a Shadow's turn, ladies and gentlemen. It's just not happening. Boo, hiss, etc. Now, it looks like she's got at least, yeah, it looks like she's got her full moon in hand, which means she will gain an ember every time she plays a creature. The problem is, how many of those untamed cards in hand are creatures? Because if she got two or three, I mean, look, it's possible to get like 10 ember from a full moon, but generally speaking, you're really going to be, if you get two or three ember from a full moon by playing two or three creatures, that's generally pretty good. Okay, so we do see the full moon coming down there. But unfortunately, we also just saw a Vigor. Healed a creature, didn't do much because there's nothing to heal. Plays down a Mamook. Oh, now that's interesting. Mamook increases the cost of forging a key by one. That didn't stop Tyler forging a key, but it did mean he had to use all seven of his Ember rather than six. So now instead of having an Ember left, he's had to use them all. What is very interesting is that Colleen's not forging next turn. She's stuck on five Ember. Now, just to clarify, I did talk about Spectral Tunneler earlier. It is an artifact. I talked about action, but it is an artifact that does stay there. But there really doesn't seem to be a huge amount going on this turn. I mean, okay, so he gets down a bad penny, which is nice. And he gets down an urchin, which lets him steal an Ember, which is fine. But it's not like he desperately needed to steal an ember this turn. I mean, he's ahead in the game. Oh, okay. Now, he does have a couple of other Shadows creatures there. Okay, so I was wondering why he wasn't... Oh, and he actually chooses to use one of his Silver Teeth to take down one of his opponent's Silver Teeth and then reap with the other. I was thinking maybe he'd just go for a couple of Logos turns here, really go ahead and do a bunch of reaping. But instead... He was able to play down four Shadows creatures, and now he's got a really good board. He can have a Shadows turn and have a really good turn with what's on board. He can have a Logos turn and have a really good turn with what's on board. What is weird is that when he used that Reverse Time, he, um, he, he kind of locked himself out of stuff like Ember Imp as well as his Library Access. So I'm not, I don't know, I might have waited to use that reverse time personally. Now it doesn't, it looks like he hasn't got a deck at the moment, and I'm fairly sure he should now be shuffling his discard pile to become the deck. I know in Transformers the rule is you immediately shuffle it. I believe that's the case with Keyforge as well. Either way, it doesn't really matter, but I think it should be immediately. Oh, now straight away here. This is very, very nice. We just see a whole bunch of creatures going away here. Oh, that was nice. That was a very good turn. Just getting a very good play. Getting rid of all of those creatures. That was really, really good. Lots of creatures going away. That really, really helps. That was Poison Wave, incidentally. It put two, I believe it was Poison Wave, deals two damage to each creature. But of course, Tyler had an awful lot of very weak creatures out. So they all went down in a single go. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, that's a problem with lots of weak creatures. Stuff like Poison Wave can absolutely wreck. Now, it looks like Dodger might be going down here. We see an Anger being played. Anger lets you ready and fight with a friendly creature. And notes Doc Bookton goes away. I like Doc Bookton. When you reap, you draw a card. It's a really fun thing to do. And I like logos. I've got a bunch of decks with logos. It's one of my... It's probably my second favourite house to play after Mars. So I'm, I'm a big, big, big fan of, of logos. So I, I, get, I get it. I get it. So, just having a quick look at the discard pile here. Of course, you get to see your opponent's deck before the game, so you've got all that information when you get going. Before I forget, huge shout-out to Cascade Games, who are allowing me to use this footage and add to commentary. Those guys are awesome, and I love them. So, and I've even got names for these rounds as well, because they hooked me up. So, I get to call them Colleen and Tyler, rather than making up dumb nicknames. Although some people have said that the dumb nicknames did make it a bit more fun. So we did see a fear come down there. No, that wasn't a fear. That was a mind barb. You get an ember and your opponent discards a random card from your hand. He's playing two mind barb and two fear and they're not a million miles away in terms of the artwork. They're almost a mirror image if you squint. 
Oh, speaking of which, there is a fear which returns an enemy creature to your opponent's hand. So, Ancient Bear goes away. Oh, it looks like we had a Control the Weak coming down there. Now the discard pile gets shuffled up. Oh, now this is actually relevant. Because obviously you can play a bunch of cards and then shuffle your deck. And if you play the cards and then shuffle your deck, that's interesting. Because those cards are now in his deck, whereas they wouldn't be if he shuffled up immediately. I might be getting the rule confused with Transformers here as a Relentless Whispers comes down. But I will I will double check that and pop it in. I will pin a comment in the in the comment section there as to the exact timing of when you shuffle your discard pile and it becomes your deck. I thought it was when you ran out of cards, but they're playing it as in when you need to draw a card. I'll double check that and get back to you. And if anybody else has got some insight, comment section, ladies and gentlemen, that's where we go. So here we're just getting more ember. That was a ghostly hand comes down. Gets you two Ember. If your opponent's got exactly one, you steal it. Not the case, unfortunately. But there's an awful lot of Ember being built up here. We're still seeing only one key having been forged this entire game. Tyler's forged one key. Colleen hasn't been able to forge a key yet. But she's sitting there with 11 Ember. And here's the thing. Tyler doesn't play too much to protect. He doesn't play FFS and Printable. He doesn't play Bait and Switch. He does play Help from Future Self and get a Time Traveler, which is going to get himself a couple of Ember as well as drawing a couple of cards, which is nice. But as it stands at the moment, I mean, look, when I'm looking at an opponent's deck now before I play a game, the very first thing I'm looking for is Bait and Switch, FFS and Printable, too much to protect. There's a couple others. If I'm super creature heavy, I might look at stuff like Gateway to this. Oh, it's another library access turn. Down goes Time Traveler. Draw three cards. That's quite good. So Colleen knows he's not playing them. Down comes Mother. Draws another card. Mother lets you draw an extra one at the end of your turn. Down comes Ganymede Archivist. Draw another card. Down comes that sloppy lab work. Archive a card and discard a card. And, of course, you draw a card because you've played a card. I mean, library access is just over the top. I mean, in my top 10 cards of Keyforge, it actually came second because bait and switch is broken beyond. But library access, make no mistake about it, it's more of a 1A and 1B. Now, Rachel, that's Rachel. Why do I keep calling her Rachel? Do I know a Rachel that looks like her? I might. That's the only explanation I can think of. The good news is, Colleen, not Rachel, has gone and forged a key. Sorry, Colleen, if you ever end up watching this, if you do watch this back and you're offended, I apologize. My Twitter handle is at the Wassy. If you want to tweet me some abuse, I, I think you deserve to. Now, in terms of this particular turn, you can't hear me, but this is in the past. But if you could, what I'd be saying is steal an ember. Get yourself to six while getting your opponent below six. Now, to be fair, she's got Mamook down, which means Tyler is not going to be forging next turn. But Colleen wants to be forging next turn. She's evened it up to one key apiece, and we know that Tyler isn't going to be forging. So if Rachel can forge next turn, she's the one that's going to go up. Now, she is now up to six Ember, which is nice. But come on. Give yourself a little bit of a, of a breather. There are these cards, like I keep mentioning, in bait and switch you too much to protect, that your opponent can actually use to punish you for having too much ember. Burn the stockpile. There's another one. But it doesn't matter if your opponent isn't playing these cards. Now, it looks like we got a Lost in the Woods. No, sorry. A Nature's Call coming down. No. I was right the first time. It is Nature's Call. Choose two friendly creatures and two enemy creatures. Shuffle each chosen creature into its owner's deck. Now, she can't go Mermook here. That's the only thing she can't do. Because if she shuffles Mermook into her deck without stealing any Ember, that's actually going to allow Tyler to forge a key. Looks like she's just going Troll. Okay. And I think I want to say it was Hebe the Huge as well. I think that was the other one she just shuffled in. Either way, she didn't get rid of her Mook. And that's important. Although. Okay. No, we're good. We're good, ladies and gentlemen. We're good. It was a nature's call. Return up to free creatures to their owner's hand. 
The key thing is, she's still got the Mermook down. Now, she has got an... Oh, actually, she's while we've been talking, she's actually managed to get herself up to 9 Ember. Played a couple cards of Ember bonuses. I believe she reaped with Mermook. Uh, the Ancient Bear, I don't believe reaped, because I think that ended up in her hand last turn. So, this is good. This is exactly what she wanted. She's got herself up to 9 Ember. And look, Tyler's playing Shadows. And like all people playing Shadows, Tyler is going to be able to potentially steal some of her Ember. But the key point here is, can he, or the key question, can he steal enough to stop her forging a key? Now, it looks like, now he's going for a dis turn. So he gets Fear, which gets that Mermook off the board. Means that Colleen's got to go for an Untamed turn next turn in order to get that back down. But he's playing a Mind Barb right away here. Could he actually hit the Mermook? Oh, that would have been so cool. Putting it into her hand and then immediately getting rid of it would have been fun. As it is, it's a coward's end, which is not so good. Now, we do see Ember Imp coming down and a Control the Weak. So now he's going to limit his opponent to playing two cards per turn while also dictating what Colleen's active house is next turn. But he's not able to stop her forging a key. The thing is, he's got himself up to eight Ember. So once again, Colleen's in that situation. Can I get him down below six or seven if I get a Mamook down? And can I get myself above six? There's a little bit of a skip there while I am um, while an advert played and I've missed something in the time being. Good news is, well, to be honest, the good news is all for Tyler here. There's not a huge amount of Ember on Colleen's side of the board. Tyler is actually able to forge a key. There's no Mamook down, so we can do it for just six. So now we're tied up at two keys apiece, and we have quite a close game going on. And really for Tyler here, now we've not seen, unless I've missed it, we've not seen bait and switch come down. And Galeen's been playing for a while, she's used a whole bunch of cards, so Tyler's got to be thinking there's a bait and switch in there. He's got to be thinking it could happen. So he needs to be a little bit careful. He wants to get enough Ember to potentially win next turn, but he doesn't want to be ending up with, say, 12 Ember and just playing right into Colleen's hands. Now, a mighty Javelin does come down. It's got an Omni ability, so you can sacrifice it on whatever turn you like, and it does four damage. And at the same time, Blood Money plays two Ember from the common supply on an enemy creature. Why would you do that? Because when a creature gets destroyed, the other player, who doesn't control it, gets that. So she puts it on... <laughs> That's just mean. Oh, puts it on the creature there and then immediately KOs it with Troll. So that she gets that ember. And that's a really nice turn. She's put herself up to six ember. It's not some unassailable position. But it's actually pretty good. That's not bad at all there. What can Tyler do? I mean, he only needs to get one ember, right? He only needs to get a single ember. So he has actually activated his spectral tunneler there. Which is quite nice. Spectral Tunneler means that one creature is a flank creature. When it reaps, you draw a card. But is he able to get any Ember away from Colleen? Because if he's not, the game's over. He can't. He's unable to get any Ember away from Colleen. Colleen's got six Ember there. Tyler could not even steal a single one. And she wins a narrow, close, gritty game. Three keys to two. Two wins in a row for her on the stream. Now, congratulations to her. Commiserations to Tyler. And I think she might even be on stream next game. So I'm going to make a real effort to not call her Rachel. Fingers crossed, ladies and gentlemen. Fingers crossed. For the time being, huge shout out to Cascade Games for letting us do this. And for you guys, tell me what you think about this game in the comment section. And do jump in on that when your discard pile becomes your deck ruling. And then make sure you like this video. Oh, go nuts, be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, where we talk about games. I mean, Keyforge, but a bunch of others as well. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.